will be in a session about basic income and how it relates to human rights, especially on a local level. Uh, I am Antonis. I'm the vice chair of Unconditional Basic Income Europe, an organization that is um, striving for the implementation of basic income throughout Europe. And next to me is my good friend Julio, who is representing here Basic Income Earth Network. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself, Julio. Hello, everybody. My name is Julio Linares. I am an economic anthropologist originally from Guatemala. And as Anthony said, I am the public outreach for the Basic Income Earth Network. And I'm very happy to be here with uh, very wonderful speakers. Before we introduce our speakers, uh, I would like to let the audience that you have a chance to participate um, in a way. <laughs> uh, let me share right now a screen that will help you realize how. So we're using Slido as on the previous sessions. We are using here as well Slido. And this is what we're going to be using for asking you, the audience, some questions and for you to also be able to submit your questions. So I'd like to give you a few seconds right now to uh, if you have already the app of Slido, use this code directly on the app or just open directly the browser on slido.com and insert this code so you can um, ask your questions and um, use the app the way it's meant to be using. I'm going to start with a cloud poll just to check if it's working. So right now you should be seeing what I'm seeing. There is a simple question, how are you feeling today? And everybody is able to just uh, submit some answers and then there will be a word cloud appearing on, on your screen as well as ours. So let's see if this works. If it works, try it. I will leave this open. Meanwhile, uh, Julio, you can introduce our lovely speakers for today. Yes. Um, so um, first of all, um, I would like to take a second to introduce a bit the, the topic at large. Uh, okay, we see it's working, it's great. <laughs> um, which is about uh, basic income at a local level, at a municipal level, uh, and its relationship to human rights. And for that, we have two wonderful speakers today. We have Angelina Cusi from Barcelona Comú. Uh, Angelina Cusi is an anthropologist, an economic anthropologist, if I may say, uh, from Poland originally, who does a lot of work in Catalonia, in Barcelona. Uh, and she will be speaking from her perspectives, doing work in the region. And we also have uh, with us uh, Balin Mishetic um, from Hungary, uh, from the municipality of Budapest. Uh, he is currently there uh, working with Mayor Koracsony uh, on many topics related to social policy and human rights. And if you could please both introduce yourselves, that would be lovely. Uh, first Angelina and then Balin. <laughs> Do you would like to say anything else? Uh, to add to, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. To add to what you've said already, you mean? Uh, okay. First of all, oh, you are not in the camera, guys. So <laughs> you, you, you get under. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so my name is Angelina Kus. Uh, as uh, Julio already said, I am um, a pre-doctor, pre-doctorate um, investigator, researcher at the Autonomous University of Barcelona. I'm originally from Warsaw, where I had some uh, political activist um, experience, and currently I co-coordinate uh, the International Committee of uh, Barcelona and Comú, the civic platform uh, governing the city since uh, 2015. And we are working in an international uh, network for what we call global municipalism. It means uh, local direct democracy, uh, social uh, protection for the people and um, envir like developing environmental policies and and so on um, and I'm an economic anthropologist uh, especially specialized in the topic of work um, and care and uh, social policies uh, and migration also so I think that's that's enough <laughs> thank you and I'm happy to be here and thank you for the invitation of course all right. Um, I'm, I'm also happy to be here and thank you very much for organizing this event. Um, actually, I were quite involved in uh, studying and researching uh, basic income. Um, maybe uh, 10 years ago, I, I, I wrote one of my uh, theses uh, about it and then also um, put some efforts into um, 
making literature about basic income available uh, in Hungarian, um, because at that time literature was uh, non-existent. Um, in Hungarian, uh, so by editing and translating stuff, um, and and I'm actually quite happy to be able to talk about basic income once again because uh, the past few years I I I, um, I was more concerned with less ambitious, uh, not less important, but less ambitious uh, social policy goals uh, concerning housing and homelessness and poverty alleviation and um, and so on. Uh, so it is nice to be able to reflect on the more long-term, more broader goals. Um, so thank you. Lovely. Um, with that, we can maybe get started on the first round uh, for the debate. Um, so we're here to talk about uh, municipalism, uh, basic income and human rights. And I was first, uh, you know, drawn to the topic because of the large uh, emergent network of now more and more mayors and municipalities uh, issuing a basic income uh, to their local citizens. Um, I remember Mayor Peduto from Pittsburgh uh, talking to us in one of the panels we had recently saying that cities uh, are a laboratory for local democracy, for democracy, uh, broadly understood. And um, I'm, I'm curious about your experiences uh, here in Europe, because uh, while the debate is large in places like the US, in Brazil, in South Korea, we don't hear so much about Europe, so I'm wondering about your perspectives, perhaps from the peripheries uh, of Europe, but also uh, uh, also at the centers, I guess. Uh, what what, is, what do you think about uh, basic income at this municipal level and uh, how could it enhance human rights uh, where you are uh, located? Uh, so first, uh, Angelina uh, and then uh, Balint. Um, how to approach this uh, this question? I mean, uh, as you probably know, in Barcelona we had a pilot program uh, of the universal basic income, and it worked very well. But it's like a super complex issue because it was designed in a uh, in a quite complex way. Like uh, there were different uh, um, designs of 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 it, and of course we can't say that it was the universal basic income itself because. Uh, I don't know, like I, I really like to always before I start the discussion to really stress that we are talking about the same, the uh, periodic cash payment, which is individual, universal and unconditional, because otherwise the discussion doesn't make sense. So, of course, in if we define it like that, uh, it wasn't a universal basic income it, because uh, like it wasn't universal, it wasn't for, for all the... Uh, population. Uh, it was in, implemented just in one um, district, a poor district in Barcelona, and um, to um, selected amount of people, of course. Uh, but the results were were very good. Uh, uh, so it was a um, very successful pilot. Although uh, personally, I think we don't need them anymore. I mean, we really don't need them anymore. We need to implement it on a broader scale and, 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 and just do it because it's like, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to making pilots all the time. Um, and, uh, but I, like, I can't talk much about the experience, you know, I can talk about my, my thoughts on the potentiality of of uh, implementing the universal basic income on a local level. This is a completely new idea for me. I mean, uh, like about seven years ago, uh, I got interested in the universal basic income uh, in its uh, mm, potential for uh, like not only individual freedom, but also activist uh, work on many other things also because it would be like liberate uh, time of people and so on. But so I was always thinking about it as a national policy. And of course, it was explained also like that by um, economists, because uh, the fiscality, uh, it's it's a prerogative of the state. And uh, it's actually quite uh, almost in, impossible if we think in, in, in the on uh, the universal basic income, uh, the way, for example, it was explained by Raventos and his colleagues uh, from Barcelona. 
uh, who are in the universal basic income topic knows what I'm talking about, like people who explained very well how it could be feasible economically and implemented in Spain. So uh, if we think about it this way, it would be impossible to implement it on, on, on the level of a city because the cities do not have uh, the fiscal pr prerogatives to do that. But when when the uh, pandemic started, uh, for me as a municipalist activist, it was so obvious that we need to link those two things, the municipalist ideas and uh, the universal basic uh, income, because it was so obvious that uh, like uh, we can't even work for any other goals if we don't have some basic set, um, ba basic um, uh, like um, like, like like some ba basic security for e every person. Uh, so I, we linked these two things, and also like we already uh, know that it works very well where uh, some other representatives, like mayors, for example, or councillors that are not the politicians on the uh, state level, uh, when they advocate for something uh, before. Uh, um, like, for example, um, housing or um, tourist pol politics, uh, like about like the way of uh, uh, um, organizing the, the tourist politics in the city or the social closures, uh, tendering uh, and so on. Like all of that it is changing in the cities because uh, there is advocacy for that, like from the national level. There is no change at all. Like there is no interest in changing something uh, in a very deeply way because they really work on a um, like according to the electoral um, logics. So first of all, uh, that thing like advocating from the level of the city because there are democratic representatives who are uh, able to really think about uh, transforming something it, like social innovation uh, grows right now on, on the local level, not on a national level. Uh, and the and the other thing is that um, like actually it's like not my idea, it's the, your idea, Julio. You know, like <laughs> uh, we were in another talk about that uh, also, and uh, you brought the topic uh, to the table that it would be super. Um, uh, transformatory to link the universal basic income to local currencies. Uh, so there is the potential to implement the universal basic income on the local level. And why I think it's good first, because I don't think that the nation states are interested in something like that. I mean, they really work for, for the market and they're really into this electoral logics. And they will just not do that. And if they will do that, they will do that in a way, you know, like Elon Musk likes it to be, for example, that it would be like cash payment, but not uh, not sufficient. So it's, it would be just to, you know, pay less to the people and uh, it's the same, like accumu accumulate capital and keep people working on something that the capitalist wants uh, them to work. So I think that uh, local um, governments are more eager to do something like that first of all and second if it's uh, if it would be with the local currency then we could avoid um i don't know like playing in all that global market because i was like uh, involved in some uh, in, in a design of local currency in valencia city um, and they were thinking, uh, they were like uh, implement, trying to implement a local currency in some district. Why? Because they realized that they are making some cash benefits and social policies uh, to very multicultural um, uh, group of people there, like full of conflicts and so on. And they realized that all the efforts that they are doing um, are like uh, for foreign capital also because those people go to Carrefour or wherever uh, like supermarkets spend the public money there so it just goes out of that place and if they are uh, using the uh, local currency they are not only not playing on that global market 
uh, uh, helping it accumulate uh, the capital and create global inequalities. Uh, but they are also creating ties because they are like cre creating a local network of actors who are engaged in that. And with that currency goes some values, of course, like some, some ethics, some ideology. Uh, so they are creating the community. That's why I think it's a good idea um, to think about it on the on the local level. Very interesting what you say, um, Angelina. Because I mean, first of all, uh, uh, thank you. But uh, unfortunately, it was not my idea. I, I learned about basic income and local currencies from South Korea. Actually, the city of Gyeonggi. Well, the region of Gyeonggi uh, actually now gives uh, basic income to about 170,000 people in a local currency. It was first on the city level, then it became uh, the mayor became a governor of the region, and now he's running for the presidency of South Korea, and he might win. He pledged that he will give a basic income to all South Koreans. So we see this like local emergence of a local policy that started local and then through through politics grew. So I'm curious uh, now to hear from Balen who. Uh, you know, we know now with the elections in Hungary coming up, it's a very, it's a very big thing. Uh, uh, what, do, what, do, what do you think about uh, this question about into basic income, uh, municipalism, and human rights? Yeah. Okay. So um, perhaps I should say by emphasizing that uh, that even though I I do find uh, the idea of a basic income as it was defined just now as well by Angelina to be a very important and uh, and inspiring idea. I, I also think that there is a tendency within uh, the um, the basic income research or basic income advocacy field to develop a somewhat fetishistic relationship to the idea of basic income and to start to think about it as a goal instead of thinking about it as a means towards mm. goals. Because basic income is an instrument uh, of something. It can be an instrument of uh, of social justice, equality, the provision of social minimum, social citizenship, etc. Uh, and I think it is quite important to to keep these these more fundamental goals uh, in focus and to always evaluate basic income or half basic income proposals, semi and quasi basic income proposals with all other types of proposals from the perspective of these goals, because eventually it is not, basic income is a technical solution more so than, than an ideal, uh, and we should ought to fight towards ideals. Um, so this is one thing. The, the other thing in relation to that is that I think it is uh, self-evident that uh, the realization of human rights uh, necessitates uh, at least the following two things, uh, egalitarian redistribution on a very significant scale, and also the provision of uh, a social minimum to all members of the political community or the, the provision of uh, basic income security, uh, basic economic security, and so on. So, so these are two things that, uh, that um, the realization of human rights necessitates. Um, now, this is important, I think, to emphasize because um, th this this idea that that is behind all of this, what I all of what I've said is 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 social citizenship, and I think social citizenship is we should we should think about that at least on the level of nation states, uh, because that is the that is the uh, frame of reference politically and and even psychologically for for citizens, uh, in which ideas of uh, of justice and uh, and equality uh, can and ought to be realized in the first instance uh, which is not to obviously devalue efforts uh, towards international redistribution and so on but uh, but if we look at the detrimental effect uh, that inequality has for example on public health and um, and crime rates and uh, infant mortality and everything else, those relationships exist predominantly in the state level. Um, now, um, for that reason, um, I think that uh, while, I, while I agree with, with Angelina that most uh, municipalities simply do not have the kind of uh, fiscal resources and fiscal like authorization that uh, uh, the implementation of basic income would require, 
because it is redistribution. So you cannot just give much more money to much more people without also taxing more or in a more uh, progressive way anyway. Um, and I don't think, I mean, I might be wrong, but, but you know, most municipalities, at least uh, in Europe, do not have that type of uh, power. So it is just not feasible in that respect to implement uh, basic income in a municipal level. But what I said earlier, I think might also lead us to conclude that it is also not a very desirable solution because uh, the kind of equality that that has the most uh, important and most, uh, I should say, intimate effect on, on people's uh, life and uh, and uh, welfare, the type of equality that exists in the society in which they live and not the type of equality that exists in the city or township or small locality in which they live. Uh, and, and, if, uh, and furthermore, if we focus, and this, this is the final thought, I think, for this question from me, if we focus too much on municipal uh, possibilities, I think we also miss something because um, we have this tendency of having progressive, very progressive, like in Barcelona, um, uh, progressive leaders and leaderships in uh, larger urban settings um, and less so in, uh, in smaller towns or in rural areas. Now, that's, if, we, if, we, for, if for this reason we focus too much on municipal level social policies, then we, we are risking missing the most important tasks because these municipalities, the possibilities of municipalities, and that applies also to Budapest, uh, those are the possibilities of the rich. Uh, it's n obviously, I'm not saying that not, it, it is not the case that in Barcelona and in Budapest also a lot of poor people and very poor people live, but if, we, if I look at Spain or if I look at uh, Hungary, there is an obvious relationship between um, settlement size and, and region and, uh, and people's life chances and income and wealth and livelihood. And, and those are the kind of inequalities that uh, the state and egalitarian redistribution should, uh, should equalize. And that, by definition, cannot be done on a municipal level alone. Uh, on the point of desirability, I'd like to uh, give the chance to the audience to answer a very single poll as that some have already noticed, how urgent would it be to implement basic income uh, before going deeper into whether that should be on a national level or on a municipal level or another kind of level. Let's just check uh, from the audience if they think it's urgent to implement as a policy. And while the audience answers, and I'd like to remind the audience, uh, given the chance that you can still uh, use the Q&A on Slido to ask your questions. And at the end of the uh, of the debate, we will choose some of your questions to ask our speakers. And while the poll is on, perhaps uh, our speakers can give some reactions to the to the um, to the results of the poll. Angelina, would you like to start commenting on the results? It, it looks like uh, our audience thinks it's urgent. And and, and how many how many people have voted? Because if they are three, I don't know, like <laughs> just a few people. <laughs> like who? Yeah, so far it's just six. Voted? So far it's just six. So it's not exactly <laughs> representative. <laughs> but hopefully yeah. there will be more people <laughs> voting. Uh, from those six, we can see that uh, we can see some results at least. Yeah, if I if I may comment on what Balin said, that uh, mm -hmm. uh, I would prefer to do that because it's like okay, six people have voted. Uh, it's very urgent. I mean, uh, I'm happy about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wanted to say first that um, I think that it's very important to fight for the universal basic income on both levels at the same time. Uh, one thing um, doesn't exclude the other one. And uh, I wanted to agree that the basic income should be th thought about, 
actually thought as a tool uh, and that we miss a political horizon. Uh, I mean, we have it, all the people who are uh, in favor of that, we somehow are, of course, um, immersed in any in many different uh, political horizons like the feminist, the green one and and so on and so on. Yeah. So uh, somehow we've got it, but we should like create a common discourse, a common political horizon. And this is what actually we tried to do from Barcelona and Comu uh, from the like bottom up uh, level as an as activist of uh, our uh, civic platform. Uh, to bring together the social movements and uh, local politicians and to talk about that horizon, yeah? Um, but I don't agree, uh, like, definitely that the state right now, this is, like, the point of reference for the civil rights uh, with which uh, the universal basic income is naturally linked. Uh, um, maybe my perspective is different because I am within this uh, global municipalist movement. Um, and uh, like the aim of this movement is to challenge that thinking. I mean, if we are talking about something so revolutionary, revolutionary but urgent, like the universal basic income, why we are not challenging also the the power of the nation states like which are uh, i don't know like by definition quite violent i'm an anthropologist so uh, i see it like uh, this kind of big states like 40 millions of people 60 millions of people i mean th like this this level of administration by definition that by definition is violent that's why we 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 advocate for the politics of proximity when you are you, you know your neighbors you know the context uh, you can give the voice to the people not implement something what you can't even communicate because you can't communicate from the metropoly uh, to i don't know 50 millions of people like um, you don't know how the message gets there to the people, you know, and the policy and so on and so on. So, uh, like, I'm really into challenging the, the power of the nation states, which are, of course, historically created. I totally disagree with that. Uh, the civil rights are linked to the nation states uh, because it's not like that. Like, uh, I don't know, uh, at least in uh, European historiography, we link uh, democracy with uh, police, with, <laughs> with cities uh, from from Greece. I mean, I also um, disagree, of course, with this view because we have examples in thousands of cultures of direct democracy, much more radical than the Greek one. Uh, but yeah, like they were linked to the local level, like democracy, the concept of democracy was always developed on, on a local level because there you can really have a participative as um, mm, citizens otherwise you have just voters once uh, every four years uh, who i don't know watch the, the 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 television and don't have even a good choice i mean the political parties are all almost the same uh, so i i, I can't agree with that uh, and i and i really uh, think that uh, it can't be explained like self-explanatory in, in such a self-explanatory way like it must be implemented from the level of the states because the states are uh, linked to the civil rights right now no um and uh when it comes to the competence of the cities as i said before they don't have it but that's why we are tr we are giving this idea of innovating with the local currencies i mean we already have so many small uh, ecosystems which are not uh, supported uh, from the c uh, city halls uh, f from the level of the local administration, but made by uh, autonomous collectives. I don't know, like, for example, in Greece, uh, during the crisis and after the uh, economic crisis, like cooperative social economy entities that they cooperate in an ecosystem together. They have already they, their uh, currencies and it's about supporting it. It's about doing municipalism. Municipalism is not just a progressive local administration. It's the, this... Uh, counter power, this collaboration between uh, the social movements and, and the local 
um, government. Uh, so this is a way to skip this lack of competences also, because as we know, if we are escaping the circle of the um, currency in in in, in in the national circulation, then we have uh, different possibilities. So uh, I think we should uh, really like develop more radical imagination, not to say that uh, because the states uh, uh, are this now, so we must do it uh, like that. We don't have right now the universal basic income and we're talking about it. It's like, uh, let's do the same with other things like the nation states. Um, mm, okay, and the other argument that we're talking about cities that if we are talking about the cities we're uh, creating inequalities in rural areas. I mean, there are many arguments against uh, the universal basic income in general. It's like, uh, as I said before, I don't think that it's really, uh, I mean, the nation states are conservative all, all, always, and they will be. Uh, so the innovation is on the local level and pe people need uh, examples. People really need to see that something works and I don't know, the the, the, the world didn't fall, fall down, you know? Uh, so the a nation state like Spain, Spain or I don't know, Poland or I don't know, which country will not implement it, but a city, can innovate uh, together with the social movements uh, around this idea. And then maybe in the future, it will be uh, easier to press for that. So we, we have the choice, not have it or uh, try to do it from the local level in a very pragmatic way, because this is possible. The other thing is not possible. Uh, so what I, can I, I will think about it. OK, I would have it in Barcelona, which is already a rich city with a lot of capital. But I will not have it in, I don't know, um, uh, Badalona, just to say a small city close to Barcelona. But why I'm thinking like that, like if I have it in Barcelona, Badalona uh, citizens will press for it also. I think it's the other way around. Uh, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Uh, since you mentioned Greek several times, uh, as a Greek, I feel obligated, <laughs> obliged to to give like a quick comment. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I I can um, I can confirm what you said. Like there were several alternative movements uh, in Greece during the entirety of the financial crisis, which, by the way, is not over in Greece, uh, and even more so now during the pandemic that you know just added to <laughs> salt to the open wound that was there before. Uh, whether that, those initiatives were successful or not, one thing that I'd like to mention, and that also uh, is reflected in the experiment in Gyeonggi that um, Hullo mentioned, and in uh, other local initiatives like uh, like the Bristol Pound that was going on for a while, or like the participatory budgeting processes in Messina in Italy, and several other uh, examples from around the world. One thing that I'd like to mention is that it's not local versus um, uh, state. It usually acts in cooperation. There's a uh, they, the local level and with its level of innovation uh, or empathy towards its own citizen or uh, giving the opportunity for such initiatives to exist usually complements whatever is done on the state. So it's the, the, that, that would be my comments. Like I, I, I'm against seeing it as uh, mutually exclusive initiatives. So uh, maybe you can switch to Balin for a comment there. Okay, actually, no, yeah, no, no, just uh, just a, a quick comment, very quick comment. Like you, you can see it in in Spain, uh, like uh, progressive cities and uh, the leftist government on the national level and the influence of one uh, and 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 the other. Like they inspire themselves mutually and they negotiate. And uh, they make pressure one on, on, on the other, like the, with the housing policies, for example. OK, um, so I mean, I, of course, I, I, I do agree that uh, whatever possibilities there are in advancing uh, equality and social justice at the local level, uh, that should be uh, taken advantage of. Uh, and if that happens to be that possibility in a relatively rich place, it is still necessary, and if it happens uh, to uh, be in a relatively poor place, then the same applies, of course. Uh, 
What I, I think what we are in a disagreement with, however, is, and that is not completely uh, independent from the, from the perspective of basic income, which is that I, I just don't see how, um, like I, I don't see that, that uh, how nation states can be supposed to be more conservative than local levels. Maybe this is, you know, much depends on historic um, experience and, and the current situation. Uh, if I think about important social justice causes um, in Hungary, let's say the school segregation of uh, poor and Roma children, then it is quite obvious that uh, every time something positive happened, that was the initiative of the central government, which uh, uh, it had to push against and push through uh, local authorities, which were uh, always... Um, alongside with the Catholic Church, uh, on the side of uh, ethnic segregation and ethnic apartheid in, in, the, in the school system. And the same applies to cash, cash assistance towards the poorest. Uh, the central government wanted, wanted to expand it, and then, uh, then eventually it had to back down because of the opposition of local authorities, where uh, racist uh, uh, voters' preferences it is, it is, but it is easier for for racist voter preferences to find their way. Um, so, in that respect, I mean, I think there there should be a, a certain interaction between the two levels, obviously. And if something can be implemented in Budapest and Barcelona, that might uh, even increase the chances of uh, that same thing or something similar uh, being implemented in other cities and then eventually uh, in regional or or central government level. So, so all of this is fine, I think. But I would be. Uh, um, at least, you know, from 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 my perspective, with with uh, with this type of history, but also my studies, I would be I would advise really much against uh, against uh, thinking that uh, the locality, the local level, has anything imminent in it that uh, would lead it to be more egalitarian or less violent or less authoritarian or anything that is nice. Uh, so uh, what I think, uh, as opposed to this, is that subsidiarity and decentralization in the field of social policy are more likely to be instruments of social injustice and social exclusion than the instruments of social equality and social citizenship. That is what at least I find when I study these things. Um, but again, obviously, the, the current or the specific historical situation might lead us to focus this part or that part but 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 the big picture i think is something like that but but that is that is a lot of, lot about it is contingency obviously what i think however is important from a theoretical point of view is that okay in budapest let's say you have 23 local authorities separate for 23 districts now if you implement something redistributive in one district then you cannot redistribute between districts, even though you have very poor districts and very rich districts. The same applies in a city level going forward, a city level redistribution. You can uh, redistribute within a city, but you cannot redistribute with, between cities. And the same with regional. So I think if we, if we aim for the, the most level of equality, and I think theoretically that is the right thing to do, and that is what basic income could be an important tool of, then, it is necessary to eventually, and perhaps only step by step or indirectly and whatnot, but in terms of the end goal, to aim for redistribution at the highest level possible, even beside uh, nation states. For example, at the European Union level, the European Union would be already in the position to implement and finance, for example, a universal basic income for children, which is just a fancy name for a family allowance system. Uh, but it would be still quite good in terms of poverty alleviation and, and, and equalizing life chances around Europe. So I think that that even if we have to start local, and, you know, I mean, I'm not working for the central government, obviously, but for the Ministry of Budapest, like I also do work local, but I think the aim should be towards uh, higher levels of government and uh, because that entails broader communities of solidarity. And I think that's a nice idea. Even if it is harder to achieve, of course, because it requires some sort of affection, and that is hard there, as you mentioned, to achieve in a community of 40 million than in a community of 40,000 or 400,000. That's true. But I think still that is the or should be the uh, challenge. Thank you. 
so much Valent and also Angelina for your comments. If I if I may just to as a way of synthesizing and moving to to the next question, um, it feels like what is emerging from this discussion uh, is a, a need to tease out uh, like uh, a more comprehensive political project because I do agree that basic income shouldn't be just like the the end goal, but just a means, a tool towards something else. But and and I think politically also because it has been very hard. I mean activist people have been trying for decades to implement the basic income, but the central government just doesn't do it because it's such a big political move. It's a lot of political risk as well for local, for like national politicians to do it. So in a way, it's interesting to think about it from the, from to start from the local and then think how to grow it from there. Um, and, and, and yes, I, 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 I think that is, there is something to be said about, um, what Angelina mentioned uh, in terms of how could uh, localities gain fiscal fiscal powers through things like local currencies that can be embedded together with the national uh, fiat state money system um, in complementary ways um, that can also help to regionalize uh, local uh, supply chains, uh, so regenerate the economy at more regional levels and also make it more complementary. Today we have a you know a very globalized supply system. You just just look at the food sector, for example, and the subsidies that go into this just in the European Union. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm I'm quite interested and curious because I, I I do agree uh, with Valid's uh, concerns about um, how oftentimes the local can also mean you know violent, uh, racist, uh, you know exclusionary policies. Uh, but I do agree that. Uh, I, well, I do agree with this. I do think it's important to tease out an alternative that is starts local, but it can also be uh, federated or grown uh, from the bottom up in a more cohesive way. And I think that's what we're missing somehow at a political level. Totally agree with that. <laughs> um, with, uh, we have 15 minutes until the end of the session, so I'd like to move on to the next Question, uh, Angelina, you have a quick comment. Okay, <laughs> I'll give you a thought to respond first, and then uh, we will switch gears a little bit to it, uh, relating it, bringing it back to human rights and youth more specifically. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, I think that it would be, it would have been great if from the beginning we would have also. Uh, defined, for example, the municipalism uh, in the same way uh, we defined the universal basic income, because otherwise we are engaging in some discussion discussions that I don't know, like uh, repeats a bit. For example, uh, I would like to stress that municipalism it's not the idealization of the localism. It's not to think that the local necessarily. Uh, has uh, a more progressive power just because of being local. Uh, I'm from Poland originally, and uh, maybe many of you uh, know that uh, the Hungarian context is quite similar to the Polish one in many ways. And we know, for example, that the local governments, which of course collaborate with the far right uh, government, uh, national government, they um, uh, Mm, announced uh, like zones free of LGBT people. You know, they, they did that on the local level. I mean, the, 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 like in Poland, uh, fascism grows up from the local level too. Uh, in a country, you know, like uh, where where, where mm, the whole Holocaust has uh, taken place, it's like incredible. So, uh, and I'm a person who, uh, as an anthropologist, I worked. I, I lived nine months in a. Uh, anti-capitalist, uh, a communist uh, village in the south of uh, Spain, uh, which was supposedly th that example of the another world which is possible and so on. So I could see all that phenomena of caciquismo, it's called in, um, in, in Spanish, you know, like nepotism, creating local networks of dependency and so on. Like there are a lot of risks uh, related to uh, localism, of course, and we know that. Um, but the, the, the transformative power from the local level comes not because we think that there are more progressive mayors right now on the local level and they're going to do that because we don't think in that top-down way. We think on the bottom-up way and you can't do like a really bottom-up 
um, uh, activi political activism on a national level. It was like, uh, you can't do that. You can't uh, create um, movements. You can't uh, press for that. So the, the transformative power is in switching to more direct democracy. That's the point also, because it's another way to have uh, received uh, universal basic income. And another thing is to fight for it, to be involved in that and to be really a citizen, not think about you that you are a citizen because you vote every five years. So I, I, I agree. Uh, and I, I also just agree with to, this. Yeah, I just wanted to stress that municipalism is not localism, either idealized. Uh, and it's important to know that. Um, and uh, what I wanted also to say that I really like the idea of implementing it on the European level. I really believe also that, the, uh, mm, okay, like uh, the bottom up level is necessary, but the top down also very necessary. And, but so this top down level would uh, work better on, uh, in our case of our region on the European Union's level. Yeah, but uh, I would love to see that, like uh, Europe of uh, of cities, of villages, of towns and regions, more than Europe of nation states who uh, compete right now. And I mean, uh, suppose the, uh, you know that I, in Poland we're talking about Polexit right now, you know. <laughs> uh, so these nation states will just destroy this European Union soon, it's, <laughs> it looks like. So I really would love to see this uh, European Union of cities and regions. But taking into account that there are no um, like democra democratic tools to influence the European Union and the uh, treats, the, 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 how do you say that in English? Los tratados? How do you say that, Julio? Uh, can you repeat? Treaties. The treaties. The treaties of the European Union are uh, so conservative, uh, so neoliberal, so like, I don't know, like uh, privileging the com uh, co um, competitiveness of um, um, above, um, I don't know, the human rights and everything else. So I'm not sure how it, it can happen. But of course, as you know, uh, there are also a strong advocacy towards the European Union to implement the universal basic income or at least any other like social benefits for the poor, how they call it. But to, <laughs> I may digress here, but there are ways to even change the treaties. It's part of the treaties, uh, how to change them, but it's a very slow and uh, not as uh, easy process to understand, especially from the perspective of, a, of the average citizen. Uh, but let's not digress. Uh, the, you mentioned already uh, different aspects of human rights by mentioning different social groups. And um, on the one hand, wherever a basic income experiment has been implemented, it's very clear that it benefits those that need it the most, exactly because it doesn't target them, but it gives uh, the same uh, cash transfer to everyone. So this has shown incredible results, especially in the most um, in the in the developed countries, because it hasn't been tested that much in developed countries. Um, but one aspect that is related also to how you mentioned democracy is youth participation and how youth have been um, constantly disappointed by the fact that uh, there are not enough tools for them to have their voice heard and their ideas implemented, be that on a local level, on a national level or a European level in our, um, in our context. Uh, or when there are such opportunities given, they feel like uh, they are being listened to temporarily and only as a means of uh, saying that this happened and then not taking their ideas forward. I just returned from the European Youth Event in Strasbourg and uh, I was really happy to, to be there and have a, a group of young representatives of Unconditional Basic Income Europe um, organization participating there uh, and basically trying to spread the word around. And uh, one of the activities that we did like uh, outside of our workshop was to go around and ask young people what they think about basic income. And we were surprised, first of all, that everybody has heard about it by now. This is very different from when we started as an organization or even as, or even as individual activists. Now everybody knows it. And especially when it comes to young people, they're all fully in favor, even more so after the past year and a half 
where they've seen they're already double level of unemployment staying like that. They've seen uh, that they have good ideas about how to overcome different types of global crises like these, like the climate change, which is even more uh, <laughs> will stay with us much, much longer. Uh, but they're not heard. So I'm wondering what's your opinion concretely on whether basic income would help youth to, to be heard more, to be participating more, uh, either directly as younger candidates or by having enough time and resources to basically participate. So um, there is another poll that we have for the audience on that. And while I'm sharing the screen, I would like um, first Angelina to respond to that and then Valent. And please keep it short that we have seven minutes. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm not sure if I can keep it short, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I wanted to say that I, I feel really sorry for young people right now. I mean, they, uh, the, the, the generation of our parents uh, already started to uh, really paternalize our generation, the millennials well, one, saying that, I don't know, we are uh, like lazy, that they worked for everything they had, that's why they have it. Like, of course, without any data, without knowing that it's not the same to live in uh, th those two different contexts that we were entering the adulthood. But they even uh, humiliate more younger people, youth. I mean, I'm 30 years old. I don't uh, feel like being, I don't know, super youth anymore. I, so I don't consider myself like that. But people who are 20 something or even approaching 20 uh, I feel really sorry about them. I mean, uh, their situation is uh, so difficult and they are so humiliating all the time. Like I'm wake, like waking up in the morning with the radio and I hear uh, like people from the generation of our parents talking about the young people, how lazy they are, how they don't make the effort, like without even inviting any one of them, even they are perfectly prepared to be part of these debates. Uh, so I, of course, uh, taking that into account, I really believe that uh, something like the universal basic income would help these people to work on what they want also. I mean, it's not enough, of course, but uh, taking into account that there are not uh, so many full contracts, stable jobs anymore, that they can uh, complement the universal basic income with other stuff. And so they would have, of course, more free time and they would uh, not be focused only on survival. You know, like what uh, like the, you can't. Uh, create a better future if you are afraid about the future because the future is constructed from what you're doing today if your today is about uh, just thinking about surviving you that's gonna be the future also like uh, all the time surviving surviving so uh, of course it will empower the youth uh, but not only the youth <laughs> uh, everyone but it's especially important for them because uh, young people are perfectly skilled uh, they uh, often are are already involved in many social movements. They don't need to uh, have just, I don't know, one employer who will tell them what to do. They have plenty of ideas on their own. So it would like liberate the capacity to work on things that are socially important. Because if we are working on things that the capital um, decides uh, on what we have to do, we are like, I don't know, like working like slaves. And I, we know that work is not, uh, waged work is not necessarily a good thing. Like we are destroying the environment, we are destroying people's health and, and so on and so on. I mean, like the myth of uh, the good wage work just because it's work, uh, it, it's not sustainable anymore. So that's, that's my answer. I think it would definitely empower uh, the young people and would uh, destroy that unhealthy work ethic related to wage work and only wage work. I definitely agree with you and it seems like the audience, at least the four people that responded to the poll, <laughs> agree as well. The, uh, there is 75% probably yes and 25% uh, definitely yes. There's no negative answer. So the audience, at least the people that responded, believe that it would help. Uh, Balin, I'd like you to also give your brief response to that. Sure. Um, no, so I, I agree that uh, that basic income has the potential of uh, enhancing, increasing participation. One effect of mechanism 
would be what Angelina mentioned, that uh, people having more time and less income insecurity um, are more likely to be able to participate in uh, public affairs, in politics. Uh, I also think that another uh, effect of mechanism uh, or mechanism of effect would be to, 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 to increase the stakes of politics, because I think one of the one of the most important things that discourage is uh, people, lower class people in particular, uh, from participating in politics is that really it doesn't matter. I mean, every almost everything will be almost uh, the same. So then why, why bother? Uh, and and the perspective of a basic income or, or the precedent of changing something uh, so fundamental in in uh, re distribution and redistribution, social policy, etc., uh, um, would have, I think, possibly a very very important uh, effect uh, on just like opening up possibilities and imaginations about okay, if if basic income can be implemented, then what else? Perhaps some other things uh, that were had to be utopian are also um, implementable. So uh, uh, that is my, my point of view. However, I, also, I should also stress that from a political perspective, I am very suspicious of uh, generation generational logic, uh, because I think it, it, while it does capture some important aspects of the truth, it has the tendency to distract attention away from class inequalities, which are much, 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 much more influential for everything, including political participation, than generational uh, inequalities. In fact, from the same generation, if you look at the top 10% uh, and the bottom 30%, they have less in common than uh, with other generations. So I, I think we, we ought to be careful with that. I, I, the time really flew away. Eh? <laughs> we have one minute until we close the session. <laughs> I, I think we're, the main outcome should be that we should have a follow-up. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's uh, definitely a lot of discussion in relation to human rights and basic income. So uh, thank you both for participating. We have one last poll question. Uh, should local governments in the European Union implement basic income? So I'd like to just uh, show the responses and then we can close our session. Very representative poll. It's a very representative poll of two answers, <laughs> and they're 50-50 between probably yes and definitely yes. So, uh, uh, but well, I guess it's positive. So the, the audience is inclined in that regard. Uh, your one sentence closing remark, and then we can say goodbye. Let's start with Angelina. I'm always starting. <laughs> It's unfair. <laughs> no, I, I don't have uh, anything to add. I think that we touched not directly. Uh, we, we didn't target like that, but we touched uh, the, the topics uh, related to the uh, to the human rights, uh, definitely. Um, and I, I don't have anything to add. I just wanted to, to say you thank you and say that it was like a really nice discussion, organic discussion. And uh, it was a pleasure to agree and disagree and uh, to share this moment uh, with, with you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think that m many of us are like, uh, I don't know, involved in all sorts of day to day uh, struggles for like defensive struggles or struggles for like incremental changes and so on. And that's all right. But but it is nice to have the time from time to time to be able to reflect and discuss some of the broader stuff. And, and, and for that, I am grateful. And thank you very much and keep up uh, your good work. Thank you. 100% agree with both your comments. Thank you so much, both of you. And hope to see you in other spaces soon. And good luck with all your struggles. Uh, we keep we keep doing the good fight. Take care. To the Thank audience, you. keep Goodbye. looking up for basic income and keep attending the Fundamental Rights Forum. Bye.